What did they say? <clears throat> Nothing serious. I lost another one of my nine lives. Oh, this hurts. Got many left? I'm in the red. <sighs> you hasn't woken up yet? Nope. We're gonna be here a while. Vulpine. Seven letters. Cunning? C-U-N-N-I-N-G. It fits. I hope it doesn't throw anything off. Yep, looks like you were right with Cunning. What are you looking for? Nothing. Will he live? He'll live. So what have you found out? Randall Lee. Apparently in love with our penitentiary system, judging by the frequency of his visits. Theft, assault, extortion, you know, minor things of the sort. Any partners? Always works alone. He's never ratted out his employers, provided they exist. Did you find anything? Is this our man? Do you have proof? Hmm. Looks like we know who tore his pants following Clarice Freeman up to the rooftop. His pants have a tear in them. I found a piece of that same fabric at the gym, on the stairs that lead to the rooftop where we found the second body. Makes sense, but... How many pairs of ripped pants are walking around New York City? <laughs> I don't call that evidence. The guy who broke into the gym in Dunn's place has a thing for sardines. Did you smell his breath? Right. Because there's only one sardine fanatic on this side of the Hudson. I need something more. I saw footprints from those very same shoes next to both the gym murders. Unless you're telling me that shoe is a limited edition, I'm gonna need something else.
One of the thugs that attacked me the other night had a snout just like his. I'm sorry, but you can't incriminate someone based solely on species. What else you got? What more do you need? I've given you four pieces of evidence. None of which are conclusive. He tried to throw me off the rooftop. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. He's our man. No, he's not our man. Make up your mind. He's just a puppet. Someone is pulling his strings. Hmm. Could it be Yale? He's hiding something for sure. But I don't think he did it. By the way, was he discharged? His room is empty. They let him out yesterday. He's in police custody now. You can tell he's an athlete. Made quite the comeback. Anyone else would have taken ten times as long. Anyway, he better be fine. You know they've ordered me to escort him to Madison Square Garden on the day of the fight. That's the first I hear of it. Quick, what do you want? Good cop or bad cop? I'm the good guy. <laughs> good thing someone took out the trash. <laughs> No wonder you were saved by garbage, you piece of trash. But you're gonna wish it hadn't. Go to hell, you dog. Don't pay any attention to flat feet, Mr. Lee. Yeah, you're in a tight spot. But there's always a way out. We have proof that you killed Joe Dunn and Clarice Freeman. I'll call your bluff. You ain't got nothing. Are you acquainted with our usual witness program? For a modest sum, they'll say they saw your sorry snout when and where we tell them to. Cut the crap, Smirnov. You know we've got conclusive evidence. However, we can offer you a deal. If you tell us who hired you. What can you offer me? We could significantly reduce your sentence. I could testify that you helped me on the rooftop. <coughs> That's a start. But it's not good enough. I want in on the witness protection program. New city, new job, new identity. And a clean police record. That's the only way I'll talk. Meanwhile, I want police protection 24-7. I'm afraid that... Whoa! Watch out! I'm afraid that... Whoa! Watch out! I'm afraid that... Whoa! Watch out! <laughs> Luckily, Smirnov's wound wasn't as bad as Randall's. Unfortunately, the police found nothing on the nearby rooftops. Our best shot at finding the killer was gone. So I went back to my previous lead.
It's from before my mother got sick and we moved here. I loved reading stories about pirates, so my father drew a treasure map for me. I searched the whole house one clue at a time. It led me to this enormous tree in the yard where Daddy had put up a, a tire swing. Hello, Smirnoff residents. You're Next dead! Here. No, I got you with my lasso! Can you quiet down, kids? Dunn got killed for stirring the hornet's nest. And you confessed your crime! Kids, please. He'd been investigating athletes for months, including Helen Moore and Al Stone, among others. Mm -hmm. Dunn's notes aren't all that clear, and I'm not sure what he was after. Mm -hmm. But I'd say we're facing a widespread corruption case. Well, if you're right. That could be some dangerous evidence. Bring it here ASAP. Sure, but there's something important that I need to finish first. I wanted to follow a certain lead on my own before Smirnov had the chance to see anything. According to his notebook, Dunn had seen Craig Spano at Sam's diner just four days before his death. Scram, you son of a bitch! I have some questions for you. Oh, well, maybe I don't have answers for a pussy. It might have been easier to slap the information out of him, but I decided to trust in a universal truth. Everyone is guilty of something. You don't know who I am, right? Don't know and don't care. Come on, spit it out. I'm John H. Blackmore, public health inspector. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> there are some real freaks around here, so I have to be firm, you know? Have you eaten? Dinner's on the house. After you answer my questions. Sure, go ahead. Your call. Always at your disposal, Inspector. Ask away. Fear turned him soft and made him talk. Sure enough, Don had been there a few days back with a chimpanzee who matched Spano's description. Apparently, the guy still lived with his father. Don said he couldn't stay there a day more. For the time being, he would move into his place. Wait a minute! What does public health services have to do with that chimp? The chimp died of food poisoning. But wait! He... he didn't even eat! Which is even worse.
Dunn had taken Spano to his place. I wanted to believe that when Randall Lee broke into the apartment, Spano fled to his former address. But where could that be? If the living have rich and poor neighborhoods, so do the dead. In the mid-19th century, Greenwood became the resting place to the city's most distinguished citizens. Thinkers, scientists, writers, inventors, artists, businessmen, politicians, police officers, thieves, pimps, and murderers. Here lie the bodies of the soulless minds that raised New York from the ground up. Now you know where to go to become somebody in the Big Apple. A Celtic cross. Supposedly, the ring keeps the devil at bay by reflecting the sunlight. Really handy at this time of the day. The four bases guarding their father. According to the book I found at Dunn's place, fans of the sport leave baseballs on Bradwick's tomb to pay their respects. It's strange that I don't see any. Maybe they're gone with the wind, or somebody claimed them as part of their inheritance.
I've never trusted angels. When they fall... The world falls with them. If this had been here over 30 minutes, it'd be covered in ants. Still hot. I'm investigating a case of sports corruption. I think a considerable amount of athletes are involved, both current celebrities and former stars. Joe Dunn met with someone at the diner, close to his gym. Then he took that person to his house, so that he didn't have to live at the cemetery. I would have never guessed the person's identity. I found a baseball glove at Joe Dunn's place. A glove signed by a great star. I couldn't believe my luck. you I'm 
I'm John Blackside, private investigator. How's Joe? One question at a time. It's my turn. Your turn. Why are you hiding here? Because I, I fear for my life. Because this is the only place where I, I feel safe. Because Joe took me to his home. But they went looking for me there too. What did he want from you? And who wants to kill you? One question at a time. How's Joe? What would happen if I told him the truth? Would he lose it? Could I take that chance? Joe Dunn is dead. Murdered. I told you, Joe! How did it happen? One question at a time. My turn. Why did you meet with Joe Dunn? Because he thought that the same guy who wrecked my career was ruining many others. Because he wanted me to tell him who was behind my decline. Because Joe knew the same guy would go after him too. And he was right. Our old friend, the surgeon. Is Mitchell the surgeon? Is he the person behind all of this? That surgeon you mentioned, is he... My turn. I want to know why I should trust you. because I take my job very seriously. It's my turn. That surgeon that you mentioned, is he in this photo I got here? Ow! Hey! Ah. Hey, that toss was... Both my ear and my self-esteem would hurt for days. But at least I had a new lead to follow. The surgeon. The bastard had avoided my scrutiny by passing as a hospital doctor. But now, all of my senses were on guard. No matter how good the disguise, or how well he hid, I would find him.
So what you're saying is, one, there's a corruption scandal involving all kinds of athletes. Two, our puppet master is a surgeon named Mitchell, a man who happened to fight in the war with Gunn, right? Every lead I've found points to him. Anyway, where was I? Number three, right? Three. Since Dunn was on his trail, Mitchell hired an anteater to get rid of him. Then, since you were also shaking the wasp's nest, he went after you. But the anteater made a mistake, and Mitchell killed him to cover his own tracks. And, wait, four. The key to all this lies with a common friend of Dunn's and Mitchell's, Craig Spenow. Do you really trust him? I think he didn't lie to us. Although he might not know the whole truth. Four. No, I mean, five. Dunn was murdered five, I mean, four days after taking Spenno to his house. If that doesn't make him suspect, makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it could make sense. Ha! <laughs> Who's the detective now? Let's follow up with the suspects. You told Smirnoff that even though you're sure Yale is innocent, you think he's hiding something. But what about O'Leary? Um, six.